Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. We are in sunny LA, and I am joined by none other than my mate, Joseph Smith. How are you doing, brother? I'm very well. It's lovely being what, out here, isn't it? What, what, yeah, what, what a dream our, our job is. I know. It's mental, isn't it? 30 degrees, sunny, not a cloud in the sky. It's 9 a.m. for us right now as well. It's incredible. Um, it's unbelievable. We're in the Hollywood Hills right now. Manchester United play Arsenal at the SoFi Stadium tomorrow, which we're gearing up for. We've got the press conference later on today, open training session later on today. We cannot wait for that. But we're going to have a little bit of a chit-chat over Manchester United's next transfer. It's looking like it could be Maz Rowie, mm. whose move to West Ham has fallen through. Interesting one, isn't it? It is interesting. He's one of those players that you sort of know his name. And I think a lot of people have seen less of him than they've heard of him. Because he was, he's a, I say a big name. He was one of those sort of young, up-and-coming, exciting players at Ajax. Then he's got a big move to Bayern Munich. But it's not really worked out for him. Mostly due to injuries. His injury record. I mean, if we're worried about Luke Shaw as a fullback, this guy's similar, if not worse. His injuries in the last two or three years... T -t terrible really mm. you know not just one injury or so is that you know, a concern then it's a massive concern for me there's like he had like seven different injuries last season or six different injuries last season which i just we've obviously looked at it and thought somehow we can prevent that but it's 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 a, it's a bit of a leap for me when you look at how many injuries we had last season mm. we need to sort of fix that before we start bringing in other people's injury prone yeah. players and fixing them as well for those that don't know where the news came from florian plettenberg broke the news that um his his move to west ham was off because it looked like he was set for west ham yeah. Man United couldn't really get the deal done because we were trying to sell Aaron Wambasaka. And Florian Plettenberg reported that that deal was off and Man United are pushing in, in advance talks. And then you also had Santi Ayuna coming out saying that Masrae wants to work with Eric Ten Hag again. So it looks like this move is falling into place. I don't mind us bringing in Masrae. Obviously, you have those injury issues that you, you have. But one of the things that I find strange is that we're focusing on right back when we've got two very good right backs there and at left back we've got Luke Shaw who's consistently injured yep. and Terrell Malasio who's fallen off the face of the earth yep. and he's not even available for pre-season are we focusing on the wrong side of defence almost certainly yeah Malasio I really worry for him actually he's he's in that situation now where I think if if I could imagine a scenario where he sort of retires at 26 mm. like, and, and, and that's just me it's sort of worried for him gut thing, rather uh, than being rather like than, yeah. hyperbolic. I, I, like he's, he had this injury that he had a surgery on. It didn't, the surgery obviously didn't work. He's then had a second surgery, but from what we heard and from what was reported, that second surgery was in December. Mm. Like what, you know, this is a, a very, very severe injury or two severe injuries. And if it's not healing the way it should, that's the thing that worries me. Obviously he's, he's not even back in training yet. So I would, I'd be stunned to see him before September, mm. let alone, you know, anything at the start of the season. But I suppose they'd be thinking Dallo can play left back. I guess that's the what they're thinking, bringing another right back. But if Luke Shaw's injured, if Luke Shaw's injured, yeah. But I think the other thing is, if we sell Wan Bissaka now, we can get a player for the money that we get for Wan Bissaka. We can get 10, 15 million for Wan Bissaka, Masrawi 10, 15 million. If he goes next season for free, we are unlikely to be able to get a player for free. Would it? Do you know what I mean? I get what you're saying, and I, I totally see it. Um, I do feel like they should be focusing on the left rather than the right, yeah. especially given last season's antics. And I always feel like having Diogo Dolo and having Aaron Wambasak gives you two different style of options. Like, and I know Wambasak is not amazing going forward, but he's not, it's not horrendous. Mm. You know what I mean? And defensively, when you're playing up against a Raheem Sterling, obviously not last season, but a Raheem Sterling in form, a, a, a Mo Salah or someone, just sticking him on them. He played a lot of times out of position last season as well. He never seems to moan. He always gets his head down, works hard. I don't I don't think it'd be the end of the world to give him a new contract. No. And protect his value, but maybe the club are seeing it as if we bring him in, that's ten million on our books now. And then if we sign a player for fifteen million over five years, yeah. that's three so we got an extra seven million to spend yeah. this year, which that's how clubs are looking at things now, which is weird. They have to. I mean, we were chatting to producer Ethan yesterday, talking about some of the players that Newcastle have sold and bought. Mm. This, that, what was it? Nottingham Forest, the choice goalkeeper or something that they bought for 20 million quid. Mm. And you're thinking like, these are the lengths that people are going to to get around PSR. So if United are selling a player because they've got one year left on the contract, even if in an ideal world would keep him, mm. I think for me, I'm between those two. I, I wouldn't give him a new deal. I don't think another five years of Wan-Bissaka is what will take United to Premier League titles. 
but I would I wish he wasn't leaving this season. Mm. I think they find themselves in a difficult situation and they kind of have to make a choice. You either go, we'll let him go for free, or like you said, we can probably get seven, eight, ten million profit PSR this summer that we can put into players and really hit the ground running. Because we have to we can't remember we can't forget in all of this. Ineos are basically doing their kind of this is their trial period, isn't it? Yeah. This is the like proving to Man United fans that they're different to the Glazers and better than the Glazers. Like if they come in and go, Oh, we only got 75 million to spend this summer and we can't really turn the team around they can be as good as owners as you want if you can't buy new players you can't mm. bring new people in the, the team's going to stay the same so they kind of have to go for it I think yeah I also think like this PSR thing is almost you have to play 4D chess within it yeah. you have to plan further down the road and one of the things the Glazers and Edward Wood and that were bad at was planning down the road we'd spend mm. loads of money in one summer after usually after a bad defeat in the league at the start of the season and then we would never even consider how that's going to impact next summer's transfer window, next summer's transfer window after that. And these guys are almost considering that. Yeah. All right, maybe we, we have to be a little bit sensible this time around, but then next window we can go nuts or something, but you know the, what I mean? The extra thing on top of that, not just one summer, look four, five, six summers ahead. Joshua Xerxes is 23. Lenny Yoro is 18. Look back, Lukaku was, what was he, 25 on the signing, which is pretty young, but after his contract's done, he's 30. Bruno Fernandes, again, similar. But then you look at the likes of Di Maria, Falcao, uh, um, Ronaldo, obviously, Cavani, obviously, Varane, they were, Casemiro. Once their United contracts were done, they were worth almost nothing. Mm. Whereas these guys, Xerxes could come in, do all right, and we'll probably get what we paid for him in three years' time. That's the Chelsea model. That's what everyone's doing. Woodward and uh, Arnold and those, uh, you know, the Glazers, were looking six months ahead. Can mm -hmm. we win the league this year? Whereas now we're going, we want to win the league. We want to bring in players who can improve. But if Lenny Oro doesn't really get any better in the next two years, we could probably sell him for 90% of what we bought him for. Mm. But, you know, a 28-year-old, you can't do that. Mm. I found it weird that Xerxes wasn't here, you know, considering he yeah. wasn't involved much in the Euros. But then I heard... I don't know how reliable it is, but because it came from Stephen Allison. But he goes that like the club have kind of forced people to take those breaks, take those holidays, make sure that, you know, they're not in the red zone consistently. And, that. and whilst he may have been away and didn't play much for Holland, he still was away. He still was training every day. He was, and maybe they just need a break. So I, I see it from that perspective. But yeah, it was a, uh, yeah, I found it a little bit strange. Because if I was him as well, I'd want to be involved. Yeah. Because you you got to fight Rasmus Hoyland for his spot. You have, and and he'll be torn, I think, because the the mental stress of being a footballer is something that we don't think about as much. It's like, you know, beats per minute on the heart. How much strain is there? How many games have you played? Minutes on the clock. But it's not easy being a footballer mentally. Mm. You know, some of the you know it, it goes to show like the players who play the least tend to have the worst sort of mental health. Mm. So it's not just about you know always oh, too tired the situation in, in your head is as big as anything. So have a break. That in that Euros, even if he wasn't playing every minute, will have been very intense mm. for him. Go away for a couple of weeks, refresh, reset, and you'll get plenty of chances this season. Uh, Mathis De Ligt, Bayern Munich, yeah. uh, according to Sky Sports, Diamond Chef is, they're trying to get rid, they, they want to get rid. Seems like Man United are just, uh, do you feel we just need to go for De Ligt and start fucking around with Jared Brantford? It's weird that we clearly seem to favour Brantford, don't we? It's like we're going, we like to look, we'll keep you there. You're, that's safe. You, you, you're going home with that no matter what. But can we tempt you? But I don't want to give you that. Yeah, we don't want to give you that. <laughs> It like they don't really it's like we'll take delict if we can't get Branthwaite is how it appears to I me. think it should be the other way around I genuinely do and yeah. also when we we had like three players we could potentially sign and we were going to get two of them I always thought delict was the definite one mm. and then he was either or Yarrow or Branthwaite and I think it should be that way but it yeah. doesn't seem to be that way no it does seem like Branthwaite's the one that we're holding out for I just think that I don't want it to feel like We've end, we end up with nothing. Mm. Like this, you know, at the minute, Delict only wants United, and you know, United don't like wouldn't sign him. All, all these like sort of PR rumors yeah. that hear of like, yeah, this deal can get done any time, any time. But all it takes is PSG to go, actually will have him. Well, someone yeah, just and is then, is, is the money gone. is yeah. and he's gone into Milan or PSG or even. But we seen like it with Lenny Arrow, didn't he? Exactly. His, his priority was Real Madrid. Yeah, but we Man United make him feel welcome, make him feel wanted, offer him the right deal. Yeah. He's here. We don't want to end up with egg on our face, and especially this type of egg, because this is the one that the Glazers have had so much stick yeah. for, chasing one thing and then not getting it. But they are doing it at the right time of the window, you could probably say. Yeah. Um, apparently, Bramfrey is is holding out for what Man United were offering from Everton as well, which is 
interesting. Um, but yeah, that's that's the latest news in terms of the transfer front. Today we're going, as I said earlier, we're going to the training session. We're going to the press conference. We're going to the supporters event tonight as well at Old Brian's. If anyone's going to be about, you want to come and see us, feel free to do that. We're in the fan zone tomorrow as well uh, before the game. So again, if you're at the Soulfire Stadium, we, we all get so many DMs and messages and stuff. Where can we meet you? Where can we do this? Any supporters event that's happening will be there and pre-match will be in the tailgates or the fan zone. So feel free to come and find us. Right, we got a busy day, so we need to go get some breakfast and get on the road. Thank you for joining us, Joe. Thank you. See you in a bit.